hello guys today in this video i'm going to discuss with you about um, logic equivalence check uh, which is commonly known as lse also some places it is called as uh, formal verification also so what is logic equivalence check um, before starting this uh, i want to give you the some uh, basic understanding of the background about the asic design flow the asic design flow start with some sort of of a spec or your design spec or your design uh, or concept this is converted converted to some rtl rtl code so you have some spec uh, so let's say you have you want to design one mux so this is your design you will have two input one output one select line and this is based on that uh, this is your design you converted this to a rtl code using verilog verilog or some any hdl code now in the asic design flow this rtl is converted to to synthesize netlist yeah, synthesize netlist which will have the exact uh, transistor level uh, standard cell and other stuffs again be, uh, for uh, testing purpose we add scan stuffs to the scan uh, synthesized netlist so we'll get the scan post scan let's say we'll call it uh, the output of the scan stage is post scan netlist netlist so this post scan netlist is fed back to the our pnr tool where you will get the get the final uh, netlist uh, which is the post route netlist that is the layout uh, after layout is done you will get the post route netlist post route netlist so now let's call it uh, so now we have one mux i'll start give one uh, i0 i1 and this is uh, output y so this is my design and how do you show that whatever your design that is present here the intent and design is present here also how do you justify that what is the easiest way what is the easiest way you can tell that uh, what is the easiest way to tell that the, the functionality of this mux is present from here to here also here also and here also so there are two two ways you can do that ways we can do that one is that functional functional verification and second is our lec check so in functional verification is nothing but that you will give some inputs you will give to in uh, two inputs are there so you will have four test vectors kind of or you have uh, three inputs like uh, one two and three i0 i1s so you'll, uh, you know the output so you'll repeat those and then you will get the output and you will verify your design in this state this stage and this stage and this stage but this is very time consuming let's say you will have you have more than uh, 100 uh, k instances once your design is uh, even if we uh, small design if, if the design is having some um, 100k muxes then how do you ver verify functionally this is time consuming and it takes a lot of effort but the simpler uh, method is that this lec check the, which is our today's topic this is a logic equivalence check so equivalence check from this name also you can understand logic whether those are equivalent or not it's checking there so this logic is equivalent or not synthesized netlist and rtl equivalent or not whether synthesized netlist is equivalent with the post scan netlist whether post scan netlist is in, uh, equivalent with the post route netlist the primary intention is that the functionality should be maintained throughout the process uh, if, if start with y equal to a dot b 
at the end of this this functionality the intention should be there uh, should be present throughout this so this is why we need that logic equivalent check now uh, this is being done in uh, vlsi world so for uh, lec check uh, mostly there are uh, two uh, vendors that provide the tools one is from cadence confirmal lec tool confirmal lec also synopsis and formality tool i'll give you the basic understanding how tool is able to do that okay or we'll start with synthesis synthesize netlist synthesize netlist it would be easy to understand and post scan netlist post scan netlist so we want to check whether the functionality is maintained from here to here so how tool or how this is being done for lc uh, check uh, what we need the first thing is that we need one netlist that is called the golden which uh, golden uh, netlist and second thing is we need one revised netlist which is the modified uh, version of the netlist so this golden netlist can be a synthesized netlist or scan netlist similarly it can be a scan netlist post route netlist netlist anything so you have some uh, golden netlist which is uh, your uh, golden at that stage and the after the next stage you will have the net uh, revised netlist which will have the functionality plus some extra stuff so this extra we can write like that let's say um, in the golden side our uh, intention is y from uh, some f some functionality i want y the mm, function of a, a b c let's say this is my golden intention golden intention golden netlist intention but uh, revised in the revised case y has become y dash and this f is still present plus we have some extra stuff let's say we'll call this mm, some g a b c so this extra stuff can be uh, dft scan related dft scan or uh, pnr related uh, modification adding buffer uh, removing uh, some optimizing some connections those steps so we'll focus on the dft scan part uh, that is a major change pnr related changes are not uh, that much uh, of importance because the uh, mostly it will add the buffers or inverters or it will uh, just, uh, remove some connectivity so as long as a equal to b it is valid through the multiple hierarchy then there is no issues so we uh, first our intention uh, is that we need to compare apple to apple but here we are comparing y to some y dash which is having some this extra stuff this extra stuff so to remove this uh, to uh, while comparing we do not want to see that extra stuff extra stuff should be removed so to remove that uh, we we add some constraints to we add some constraints to lc so that this logic becomes zero so now the scenario is like that uh, now our uh, 
now if now our y def will become f comma a comma b comma c plus zero let's say we are able to make that as a zero or a logic zero it's a, to the tool and will make will feed some constraint to the tool that will make sure that extra logic is that is um, going to be a logic zero while comparing so now we are comparing y dash to uh, y dash uh, now we are comparing our y to y dash which is uh, this is a golden one and this is a revised one but both are same because of the addition of constraint which makes makes the extra logic appears extra logic that has been added to the revised side of the netlist revised netlist as some logic zero or don't it won't affect to the functionality so now we'll compare our y to y dash now it makes sense of the comparison so now we are comparing apple to apple not apple to orange i'll tell you why we need to do that why why we required to add those uh, with this example you will be able to understand the how tool calculates uh, if you think from the point of the tool that uh, tool can do any amount of boolean uh, calculation boolean calculation so but uh, flops latch black box can be written in these things flop latch black box can be written in read can, can be written as a as a boolean boolean logic so boolean logic so what tool does is that uh, let's say this is my y netlist or golden netlist in the golden netlist i have some flops and these flops i'm going to some combi logic and these are going to some other flop let's say i have only one single flop here now for this flop all these flops we can't write boolean for all these flops but we can can write the boolean for this so what tool does is that for each pin this pin d let's say some other all the pins does the same comparison it it writes the boolean some uh, it's writes the boolean at this point taking all this as an inputs these are let's say a b c and if it is uh, some z this z will be function of or let's say this is d input of the flop then this d input will be flop of the some a b c or uh, to give more meaningful names q1 q2 and q3 so this will be a function of this d of that flop will be function of the q1 q2 and q3 <coughs> so based on that similarly if we go to the y dash that is my revised side it will do the same comparison the same flop it will first so it will match this flop to flop this flop let's say this flop name is uh, ff underscore one so it will find out the ff underscore one flop go there and it will do the same comparison whatever he is doing it is doing here do the same comparison and let's say this flop is having some uh, extra inputs 
D input, SC, SI input and SC input which are the scan inputs. So our intention should be by using the data constraint this should not be come into the verification of these two flops inputs because this is not present here even if it is present it is uh, zero logic zero tied to logic zero but here it don't be tied to logic zero so we need to make we need to feed this as a zero so for that uh, for a scan flop you may be aware that scan flop is having one mux at the input of a d flop so this is a completely is called a scan flop so this is a it's a d dash so this will be a scan enable pin this is d actual d and this is a scan input so if we give scan input 0 then d input will be seen so this will never ever come into picture the scan in will never ever come to a picture and here the scan in will be feeded to from the some another top output but here that won't be present this won't be present here scan enable will be present tied to logic logic zero so basically what i am trying to say is that <coughs> tool compares the boolean uh, tool takes first uh, reads both the netlist let's say both the design y and y does now comparison it reads that then it maps it tries to map the same thing mostly it, it will try to map with the name name based on the name let's say this f underscore one or um, most of the time it will try to map with the naming convention sometimes uh, with functionality like it will map let's say it is able to map these two guys these two flops now it will write the boolean for all the inputs of this flop and this flop the, this boolean will have the the inputs of this boolean will be the outputs of other flops so this is kind of a this is in k uh, language in LEC language this is called the uh, this is called the cone of the comparison and these are all the support points key points and same way here also for each and every input uh, this same would be done like writing boolean so now uh, after writing boolean it will put some values let's say it will put 0 0 0 because of, because of this 0 it will get some output d as uh, 0 same will be done for the same input of the d it will try to do the same thing uh, let's say we have that uh, those three flops going to some combi logic it will again put the same 0 0 0 and if it gets 0 that means this is logically equivalent if it gets 1 that means it is logically non-equivalent and because we have made scan enable 0 so it will not see the scan in uh, uh, port and based on that it will try to uh, match all the flops for those the tool is not able to write boolean flops primary output primary inputs then uh, latch then black box it will do that uh, similarly this flop may be you can replace this flop with the black box it may happen with the same black box so sometimes uh, the idea is same for the black box also it will do the same thing it, it won't be able to write the boolean so it will just uh, it will uh, write from the start of that uh, input of the black box and uh, it will trace back to the next uh, element for that it is not able to write boolean that may be a flop output latch output or a primary input or um, by this way to tool does this comparison and uh, it 
tries to uh, compare both the net list uh, which are not the uh, same but incrementally added uh, in summary lc checks whether two designs are logically read boolean logically um, to the logical equivalent or not it takes very less time comparison to functional verification so i hope that um, i am able to clear all your doubts about lc or still if you have any doubt anything about uh, uh, lc related uh, you can post in the comment section below okay thank you today signing off vegan